Welcome to part two of building a digital clock. In this video, we will be using shift registers to wire up the seven segment display that we built in the last video to the Arduino. And we will be using the SPI peripheral to control everything. So if we take a look at the display, we can see it has 42 individual segments. If we want to control all of these, we can't use the direct Arduino pins because we don't have enough. So we're going to use some shift registers. The way shift registers work is they have a serial input, which means clock and data lines, and they have a parallel output consisting of eight digital lines. The neat thing of the 74HC595 shift register is that you can connect multiple ones in series and if we use six of them all in series, that's like having a 48 output shift register. We also have another two input lines, and these are gonna be in common with all the shift registers. The first one is output latch, which takes the data inside of the actual shift register and latches it to an internal parallel in, parallel out register. And then we have the output enable, which enables the output as the name suggests. And this is active low. So now we can take a look at the complete diagram to see how it's all wired up. All right, so now that we talked about the theory, we can go on and build the circuit. First thing I did was connect together all the cathodes of the LEDs on the seven segment display. After that, I cut two pieces of perf board for the shift registers, and I soldered everything together using some wires. We can connect the two circuits together using some more wires. After that, we're going to need another small piece of perf board for the Arduino. And using some sockets for ICs, I connected them so that you could uh, attach the Arduino directly to it. And then you can connect all together using some more wires. After that, we'll need some way to keep everything in place physically inside of the clock. So I looked for the shortest standoffs that I could find and came up with these. Last but not least, we have to connect our circuit to all the LEDs in the display. And I did that through some uh, 350 ohm resistors. I think that was the value at least. That took a fair amount of time, but I'm relatively happy with the end result. Now that the hardware is built, we're gonna have to find a way to control everything with the Arduino. Of course, we could do everything in software, calling digital write a ton of times inside of loops, but that's not very elegant at all and uh, instead we can use the SPI peripheral that's already included in the Atmega 328P. I want to quickly point out that there's already an SPI library for the Arduino inside of the IDE and the only reason I'm not going to use that is to demonstrate basically what's happening inside and how to do this stuff your own way. Obviously there's nothing wrong with using the library and before you get scared, it's really, really simple. I mean, there's a single control register to set up. Okay, so let's take a quick look at the data sheet. The first thing it says here is that if we configure it as a master, which is our case, we will have to control ourselves in software, the slave select line. And then as soon as we write a byte into the data register, it will automatically start shifting out bit by bit, uh, whatever we wrote into it. The last thing we need to know is that as soon as it's done doing its job, it will set a flag inside of the status register. Okay, so we can take a look now at the control register and what to write in it. So starting with bit 7, the interrupt enable bit, this is going to be a zero because we don't care about the interrupt. Then SPI enable, this is obviously going to be one. Then the data order, I'm going to use a zero because I want the most significant bit first. Then the master slave select, this is going to be a one because the Arduino is going to be the master. Then clock polarity, this is going to be a zero. And the same goes for the clock phase. The last three bits are going to determine what clock frequency the peripheral gets. Uh, we can make it basically as fast or slow as we want. In my case, I did all zeros, which divides the frequency by four. The last register is the status register and bit 7 is the flag that we want to check to see if the transmission has uh, finished or it hasn't yet. Now we can take a look at a simple example that I made here. All it does is make some of the segments on the display blink 
So every half a second, it sends six bytes through the SPI to the shift registers to fill up all the six digits. So all that the send SPI function does is take the latch line low, and then it writes the data into the register of the peripheral in the Arduino. And then it just waits for it to clock out the byte that we gave it. And then it sends the latch line high, and this makes it so that the, the byte that we sent into the shift register gets latched into the output register of the HC595 IC. Okay, so let's try compiling and uploading the code to the Arduino. Then we can plug it into the clock, and we can see that the segments that we define in the code are blinking on and off, just as we expected. All right, so the last thing I did was create a sketch that counts up from zero every second. And this isn't super accurate. It uses a timer, timer one, I think. And uh, this was just to see that everything works properly and that it looks okay when it displays the numbers. And uh, one last note that I'd like to say, if the code execution has to stop and wait for the peripheral to be done, you might as well do the job in software. Um, this was just an example to illustrate how the stuff works. And if you wanted to make it optimized in a way that it takes advantage of the peripheral, you'd obviously want to have the interrupt enabled. Okay, so I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any suggestions or questions, you can leave them in the comment. And I hope to see you in the next videos where I'll make it keep time efficiently and accurately. And I'll also try to give it some touch buttons to give the user a simple way to set the time. So thanks for watching again and I'll see you in the next video.